Hello there, morons. It's Victor King of the Morons on a Friday morning, a very rare Mezurashi event. I know I don't usually make videos at this time of the day. This is a laundry video, or video meaning you kind of like a podcast. Don't listen to it. I mean, don't, don't listen to it. Don't watch it. Don't worry about watching it. Listen to it. Not much to see here. Um, anyway, <laughs> that was childish. I'm doing a video response to a new, kind of a new vlogger. He's got about, I don't know, 30 videos or so up. And he's in Japan. His name is Kietero. And... As you, li as you probably know, if you've been watching my channel, I like to bring attention to new new people, and I think you guys like to meet new people as well. And it's more interesting because I, I really disagree with what he has to say, but those are the kind of best videos to make, right? Anyway, uh, his name is Kietero, and he's got a uh, video entitled, Teaching English in Japan, and in capital letters, DON'T DO IT! So I, um, I, I was supposed to scream that. I just wanted to convey the, the, the feeling there. Anyway, he's basically, he's an ALT or a teaching assistant. He's, a, he's someone who's come to Japan. And uh, he, he, does, he doesn't, first of all, let me just say, <laughs> he doesn't seem to be very interested in teaching or like it very much. But that's what he's doing here. Uh, he seems to have no choice. Though he, he did say in the video he's trying to get out of that te teaching. He's not interested in teaching. Uh, he's had enough of it. Uh, Anyway, uh, so he, he assists a Japanese pro staff in, in a school. Uh, I, I don't remember if it's junior high or, or elementary school or, or high school, but regardless, not really important. His issue pretty much is with the staff and the way they deal with him. Uh, he's been, I'm, I'm guessing he works for a company like Interact or something, though I don't know. He didn't say that in the video. And he's complaining about the way he's treated. He's been, uh, he, his, his contract was recently not renewed, so they, they moved him. They, they either fire them, fired him or, or anyway, he's, he's, he's out, he's out of there. The, some of the complaints about him uh, were that, some of the complaints that his company received, well, let me explain this, so cause there are some companies in Japan like Interact that uh, do the hiring of all the English teachers and then send them out to, to uh, schools, uh, basically working for the government, okay, so it's kind of like a, like a temp agency for teachers. Uh, it's pretty common, uh, quite a few people do it. Uh, the, one of the biggest one, the ones that I know is Interact, and it's pretty lucrative. So basically, they take a cut. Like they'll pay, they'll pay. I don't know. For example, I'm, I have no idea what, what these figures are correct, but I imagine they pay the company like four hundred thousand yen a month, and they give the teacher like three hundred or two hundred fifty or something like that. And a lot of these companies do. If you get a job like this, they often will not pay you when uh, on vac during vacation, but. Uh, I know for a fact that some of those schools do, if it's a, if it's a one-on-one -on -one contract, they will pay you for your vacation time as well. So I don't know if the teacher, if the school is getting a cut of that or what, or if they're getting paid anyway, who knows? Not really the point. Anyway, he was, uh, th there were complaints about him speaking too much Japanese and not following orders or following, what is it, is it orders? Anyway, not, not paying attention, not doing what he was told to do as an employee, okay. And he speaks some Japanese, and he's and he and he um, he's annoyed that the Japanese will talk about him as if he uh, or he says in general Japanese will. And of course, this is all his opinion, so you, you know I, I I tend to disagree. I'm thinking what happened is he had a really bad experience, uh, maybe even twice. But it doesn't mean that all this all these situations are like this. Okay, uh, I've worked in Japanese schools before, and, and people you know depending on you, I think uh, people uh, will treat you better or worse. So I've been treated very well, you know, and um, whatever. Anyway, here's some here's some flaw points. It's, it's, it's an interesting video. If you've got 18 minutes to spare, go check it out. And some of the things he makes that I want to point out to him, so I guess I'm talking to you directly, Kia Tero, is that pointing out someone is black is not the same as being racist. In fact, in Spanish, in Spanish, when we refer to each other, we often refer to people as negro, blacks, um, flaco, skinny, Gordo, the fat guy, Joven, the young guy, and Viejo, the old guy. And it's not, uh, or El Chino, which is any Asian. <laughs> El Chino. Uh, we don't really say Japones, even though that is uh, the, the Spanish for Japanese. So yeah, so the fact that the, the Japanese people refer to another foreigner as, as uh, Kokujin doesn't mean they're being racist. It just means they're referring to him as a black person. Now, that person could look down on blacks for some reason, and then he might be racist, but it, using the word Kokujin alone does not mean you're racist. Just like using the word gaijin doesn't necessarily mean you're racist. And Americans do it all the time. Believe me, uh, I, coming from a Spanish-speaking society or spe 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 Spanish-speaking family, um, 
and living in, and I've been to 23 countries, I've been in a few countries, people do this in every country. If they think you don't understand the language, they'll talk about you. So it's not a big deal, you know. Uh, and it's not always, uh, it's not always negative. I've heard, I've, I've known foreigners come here and they've been called, there was this one foreigner who didn't speak any Japanese and he asked me, what does Ikemen mean? Ikemen, right? And um, it means handsome. So they were, his students were saying he was handsome, you know. He heard teachers talking about him. Well, I don't remember what it was, but someone was talking about him. They said he came in and he was, he, he knew it was about him or he suspected it was about him, but he didn't know what it meant. So not always bad. That's the point. Um, and the word gaijin is not the same as the, or, and the word gaijin or kokujin for that matter, is not the same as the N-word in America. There is no way you can compare that. There is no history of, rape, of, of slavery here, of keeping the black man down. So, you, you know, there, there's never been that kind of... Uh, History, it's, it's just incomparable. For you to say that, it's kind of ignorant, uh, sorry, in my opinion. Um, and you're kind of insulting uh, uh, the whole, any, any, any black person who's ever experienced racism on that level. It's completely different. You can't really compare them. They're different. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not even saying it's better or worse. It's just different, okay? It's not the same, as you say. He says he, he, he's had a lot of uh, white friends who are here in Japan and have had horrible experiences teaching in, in English in this country. They're treated like animals, dogs, cats, because they wear tags. Now, apparently he's supposed to wear a tag to, go to, to work at his company, like a little thing that identifies him as a company employee. That's all salary men. And in fact, they wear it with pride. You know, if you get a Toyota pin, people, I mean, and that's how to... <laughs> in fact, you could probably get a... I'm, you know, I bet you could pick up women that way if you had a pin from a really nice company. I mean, it's it's a status symbol. You know, it, it means you belong. It means you're you're a, a part of society. So I don't know where you get off on thinking you're treated like an animal. I completely disagree with that. Wearing a tag doesn't mean anything. Uh, but if you if you want to get down to it, I mean, you're you're agreeing to this job, okay? If you go to McDonald's, you wear a uniform. Do you call that a tag? What do you want? Oh, I don't want. I want to wear whatever I want. It's part of society, man. If you want to, if you want to represent a company in any way, that's what you got to do. Okay. Then he talks about in 2005 how the Nova uh, bubble collapsed, and the bubble burst, and everything went uh, to hell after that. Not true. Um, yeah, it, I I don't know why where he gets that. I don't think there are any stats to support that. Uh, I will I will tell you that things didn't really change, and I was hoping things would get better because I figured with a big company like that, I have a small English school, so I thought. With, all, with that company collapsing, all these students are out for grabs, but other big companies pretty much grab them, right? Or those students just quit. Um, and he said just everything is just garbage. It's flat garbage. So, I don't know. I mean, it's, he's, got, he's had a, basically he's had a very neg negative experience. I will tell you that everyone's experience will be different. Some, some people uh, have done this for years and they're quite happy doing it. Um, some people know. So, it depends on you. Uh, I think... Um, I think you, you will have to deal with things differently, and sometimes you will feel you're being disrespected, but it's not always that way. Sometimes it's just they don't know how to deal with you. That's all. The more you improve your language skills, though, the, the better you'll be able to communicate uh, with them. Um, I think I've told you I've, I'm working at a company. Uh, as, an, as They've hired me just to teach English to the staff. Uh, not, well, not, not, so I'm not there the whole day. I'm only there uh, an hour or two a day. But the first year, is like everyone kind of, kind of ignored me, kind of stayed away from me a little bit. But not because uh, I think they were racist or anything, just because they had other things to do. They're doing their own work. But the second year, uh, everyone's much more, more friendly. I, I know people's names. They know my name. They, they, uh, I, I, the, the fact that you're there again um, kind, of, kind of garners respect, I guess is the word. You know, they're more they're more comfortable with you for whatever reason. Maybe it's just because they're getting used to it. And he says, if you come to Japan, you're going to be either an host, an ALT, or an Eikaiwa. Um, not true. There are thousands of people here who have other jobs, lawyers. Um, they're in the in, in the banking industry. They're in advertising. There's there are, there are a lot of people that you will see in Tokyo. Photographers that do other things. So that's just not true. If you come to Japan, you don't have, you're not going to, he says you have to be a puppet, puppet and you have to conform. Yes, you have to conform in part to society. That's true in every society. You know, I don't have my, I used to have my hair really long. It's not long anymore, is it? Part of society, right? I know I can't get away with that. Uh, there's, there's not a logical reason for it. It's just part of society, right? Um, you know, having short hair doesn't make you a better person at all. But you're a puppet. Okay, yeah, maybe. But, you know, you chose to be in that field. Um, but he, he's kind of he's kind of uh, 
con- self contradictory. Like he he says this sucks, and then he goes, oh, but if you're in, if you're in a good in a good Akai with school, it'll be different. Yeah, so it's different. But he does say this. I will give him um, hats off for this. He does say, come over here and experience it for yourself. Come over, come over here for a year or two. And then he says, uh, but but let it sink in that you're not going to get any serious treatment. They don't like you more than they like food. They don't treat you like human beings. You know, people love food. So <laughs> if people treat me like food, I would be very happy. Yeah, but then he goes on to say how an English school, conversation school is different. Jet is different. Uh, and then he says, "Don't uh, play stupid, don't speak Japanese. Um, we've talked about this before. There are pros and cons to it, but in the, in the end, if you're going to be here a long time, it's in your, it's very advantageous, it's in your benefit, it's in your, it's in your, oh, I can't speak English. It's in your, something, fill, fill in that blank. It's in your, to, to speak Japanese uh, fluently. If they think you don't speak Japanese, they'll talk about you. So that's what you want to do. You want to fool people into thinking you don't speak Japanese so they can, you listen in on them and make, maybe catch them in, in some kind of weird insult. And then he says, what is the dominant foreign race in Japan? White people. Not true at all. It's Asians. It's Koreans and Chinese. So you're completely wrong on that. We're actually the minority. I think there are only 50,000 Americans in Japan. Uh, not that they're all white anyway, but but he does say, he does, he does say uh, watch other people on YouTube, take notes and decide yourself. He could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you're wrong. I think you're wrong. But I'm glad you're making videos. Good to meet you, Kietero. And just a little video response to you. Um, kind of long, kind of rambling. This video may not make sense unless you watch his video first. But basically, ALT is not terrible, not great, it, but it depends on you. Every experience is different. Um, if you have any experience with this or you can link to any of the videos, feel free to link them in the description below in the comment section. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to go, go off to work. Talk to you guys later. Bye.